with its beautiful sandy beaches, clear blue waters, and lush green surrounds, Fiji is a tropical paradise. But for some, it quickly became a kind of hell. I knew as soon as I like stepped foot, it was just not normal. 101 East investigates a secretive Korean cult and joins a father on his desperate bid to rescue his son. A casual night out with friends in downtown Seoul is something Cecilia Lee no longer takes for granted. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> it's a reminder of how close she came to losing her freedom to a mysterious religious sect. This church is an evil organization. It's a cult, and I don't want anyone else to go through what I did. I had lost everything. It was harrowing. Um. It all started in 2011 after her father died of cancer and her mother, Era Jong, joined Grace Road Church. This all kind of spiraled when my dad passed, really. My mother just kind of lost it. I was only 13, didn't really know how to take care of my mother. I was like so heartbroken over my father that, yeah. Um, yeah, none of this would have happened if he were alive. Cecilia's mother became captivated by the sermons of Shin ok Ju, the charismatic founder of the church. My mother was just kind of saying a lot of weird things, like about doctors implanting like things into you, um, like chips, microchips, nanochips, um, and like lizard people. Lizard people? Yeah, like just a lot of conspiracy theories. She kept talking about revelations, like the end of the world, um, doomsday. In preparation for doomsday, Shinok Ju decided to move her chosen followers to the South Pacific island of Fiji. In 2014, Cecilia's mother announced she wanted to move there too. We made a deal, we made a promise that I would go with her um, to help her settle in. Um, and I would stay there for just two weeks. Her mother and the rest of her family were among the first of more than 400 Grace Road followers to move to Fiji. While she was there, Cecilia witnessed some of Shinok Ju's sermons. What was, was that like, the two weeks? It was weird, um, not my cup of tea. Um, a lot of wailing, a lot of shouting. Um, she would um, verbally abuse a lot of people, um, call them names, um, awful names, and... Like what? Like, Liar, devil, whore, um, things like that, um, which is not normal for a church service, obviously, and I was just um, taken aback. When it came time for Cecilia to leave, church members tried to convince her to stay, but she refused. She couldn't wait to get home. I actually started packing, like, the day before. And when I went to, you know, pack my computer, my laptop, um, it was gone. I realized my passport was gone. Is that when you started to panic? Mm. Um, yeah, I was panicking a lot. Um, I was screaming for help. Cecilia ran onto the road, flagged down a passing police car, and fled to the Korean embassy. Officials issued her an emergency passport. She managed to fly back to Seoul, even after her mother canceled her original plane ticket. What happened when you came back to Korea? So when I was in Fiji the whole time, 
I didn't realize this, but my mother had sold everything. No, I had no clothes, no money, no house. Um, my entire family sold their houses. So I had literally nowhere to go. It definitely got a lot of attention. With the help of friends, Cecilia slowly began rebuilding her life in South Korea. She started a GoFundMe page to raise money to start over. But she soon became a target for online vitriol from church members, including her own mother. I do not think of her as my daughter any longer. She, who does not listen to my words and goes against God. How does it make you feel to read this? Um, I mean, they're just words. And I, they don't know me and I'm much happier without them in my life. Cecilia has not spoken to her mother in more than three years. How does that make you feel to lose your mother to a cult? I realized she's a lost cause and I just, it wasn't healthy for me to keep ties so I just kind of let her go. It's, it's no use in keeping in touch with her. Cecilia isn't the only one to lose a loved one to Grace Road. About four hours from Seoul, on a farm near the city of Daegu, Lee Yunze is starting over after escaping Fiji with his family. Like Cecilia's mother, he was also caught in the thrall of Shinnok Jews preaching. But he says he became disillusioned after witnessing the abuse of other followers in Fiji. He decided to escape with his wife and youngest son. But his eldest son, Jiang Wan, is still in Fiji and refuses to leave. Before Yunze and his family went to the promised land, they were told to sell all their belongings and give the proceeds to the church. But there was one final rite of passage. Tell me about the threshing ritual. 7, 8명 정도의 그 기존의 목회자 출신이 그빙 둘러 앉아 있고 어, 목회자 한 사람이 네, 네 대에서 한 여덟 대 정도 그 양쪽 뺨을 칩니다. 그 성경에 나오듯이 원수의 뺨을 친다고 그런 식의 표현으로 속에 있는 어떤 그 귀신을 쫓아낸다. This ritual has been described by others who escaped. They say followers are asked to take turns hitting each other, often violently. Sometimes children were also beaten. 타장마당을 거치게 되면은 분명히 얼굴에든지 몸에 외상이 남 남게 되면은 병원에 가게 되면은 거기에 폭행이라든지 이런 부분에 대한 그 흔적이 남 남으니까. Former members say Shinnok Ju told her followers not to seek medical treatment. In at least two cases, cult members with serious health conditions requiring dialysis did not receive the life saving procedure. University professor Tark Ji Il has been studying cults for 30 years. He says Grace Road Church has all the hallmarks of one. 신옥주 씨는 성경에 대해서 해석할 수 있는 그런 권한이 자기한테 주어져 있고. 또 피지를 어떤 약속의 땅이라고 부르면서 
신도들을 그쪽으로 집단 이주를 시켰고 신도들을 통제하고 관리하기 위해서 소위 타장마당이라고 하는 그런 것을 통해 갖고 신도들 상호간의 폭행을 또 그런 어떤 폭력을 조장을 했습니다. Professor Tark believes social pressures and the country's struggling economy makes Koreans susceptible to cults. 이런 어려움을 극복할 수 있다고 하는 그들만의 약속을 사람들에게 했고 그런 역사적으로 어려움을 겪고 있고 이런 이단 종교의 그런 약속에 대해 가지고 지푸라기 하나라도 더 잡고 싶은 마음에 그들을 선택했던 이유가 거기에 있습니다. He says authorities should intervene to stop groups like Grace Road and support people who escape. Today, the professor is meeting Yunze to find out more about his experiences. 전반적인 신옥주의 어떤 설교 내용, 교리 자체는 틀리지 않았다 하는 생각을 많은 부분을 가지고 있어요. 어, 그거 상당 시간 갈 겁니다. 예. 그래서 그 안경을 한번 쓰게 되면 가족도 뭐 성경도 세상 고방법대로 보이고 고방법대로 읽히는 거죠. 근데 신옥주가 그걸 아는 겁니다. 아유, 근데 이번에 또 피지 가시면 좀그 뒤에 몇번 갔다 오셨어요? 나오시고? 나오고 나서 지금 이제 세 번째 들어가죠. 세 번째, 네, 번째 들어가는데 지금은 걔네들이 저에 대한 어떤 적대감이 굉장히 강하기 때문에. Back on his farm, those worries weigh heavily on Yunze, but he's determined to try and bring his son home. 이번에 마지막 인생하고 데리고 왔나? 응? 몸도 조심하고. 가서 그래 잘 설득하고. 그뭐 이번에는 꼭 데리고 올도록 할 테니까 일단 뭐 농장 뭐잘 관리하고 그래 좀 있어라. 그래도 몸 조심하고 내가 떠나. 그래 갔다 올게. How hard do you think it will be to convince him to come back with you? 어그 계획대로 잘 추진된다 그러면은 무난히 데려 올수 있을라 그래 생각하는데 문제는 본인이 너무 그 아버지에 대한 어떤 적대감이 심하고 교회 세뇌가 되어 있다 보니까. 쉽지 않을 거라는 생각은 들지만은. After allegations of abuse, both Korean and Fijian police investigated Grace Road Church, and in July 2018, several members were arrested, including its founder. She is facing seven years in prison and is appealing. Shinok Ju was convicted of fraud, child abuse, and assault, among other charges. Despite this, the church continues to operate here and in Fiji. Grace Road Church, now led by Shinok Ju's son, Daniel Kim, chose its sanctuary well. It's beautiful and peaceful. And it's also clear when we arrive in Fiji that it's much more than a church. It's a big business. The Grace Road Group owns dozens of restaurants, hair salons, hardware stores, and even a dental clinic. It's invested millions in the country. But former members say its Korean workforce is unpaid. Kizong Jonggyo is a religious interest. When you look at these organizations, they are interested in the political, 사람들로부터 경제적인 것을 착취하기도 하죠. The group has fostered close ties with local politicians and has been awarded lucrative government contracts, including renovations and extensions to government house and the prime minister's residence. And their ambitions may not end there. 101 East has obtained exclusive footage of Shinok Ju's sermons which reveal the cult's ultimate goal. 어느 날 반드시 전개에 들어갈 겁니다. 같이 삽니다. 사실은 성경대로 하면 종으로 돼 있어도 그들은 이게 잘 이게 안 적하니까 안 돌아가니까. 그러면서 어떻게 할까 하고 우리가 지배하고 다스리고 누리고 정복할 거야. So is this where the school was supposed to be built? Yeah. This is a place where the, where the landowner 
us, we have agreed for the Grace Road to build a school. Eh? Savanaya Tambua Kove is from the Dayumba tribe, who live about an hour from Fiji's capital, Suva. The tribe leased nearly a hundred acres of land to the church with an agreement that Grace Road would build a school on part of it. But this hasn't happened. Instead, it's all been converted to farmland. They are not transparent, what I can say. Not transparent. Not transparent. The church claims to employ more than 200 Fijians. So everybody we are meeting tonight worked at Grace Road. Yeah. Yeah. Etuate Ratanoa worked as a welder for Grace Road. Simeone Nakawalu's late sister, Kitilithe, worked at the church's dairy farm. Both describe working conditions that do not comply with Fiji's labor laws. How do you feel Grace Road treats its Fijian staff? <laughs> Etuate says he saw cult members being hit by their bosses. One day, Etuate fell off scaffolding after he said he was told to move it while he was standing on it he shattered his left thigh. Doctors inserted a metal brace and told him it would take two years to recover. Etuate says Grace Road paid his medical bills and promised him compensation. After he returned to work, the pain became too unbearable to continue, and he was fired. He's been unable to find steady work since. Well, I've been a company compensation for me. Oh, you should work at one when I can. Then, then you know, you work at one. Simeone Nakawalu's sister, Kitty Lithe, died of a heart attack in her living quarters on Grace Road's farm. He attributes her death to stress and physical exhaustion. Under Fijian law, Grace Road should have provided her with transport. And they didn't do anything for her funeral? They didn't? No. They didn't even send flowers? No, just, yeah. Nothing. They say workers are scared to criticize Grace Road because of the church's influence with the government. After repeated requests to various government offices and ministries, including the Attorney General and the Prime Minister, no one from the Fijian government was available to speak with us. Investment Fiji, the agency responsible for foreign investment, said it was told not to speak about Grace Road. Lee Yunze has arrived in Fiji. His first stop is the Korean Embassy. Mr. Lee, hi, hi how is it going? Uh, I'm Okay. Good luck. The embassy has helped several former cult members leave Fiji in recent months by providing emergency passports and safe passage to the airport. But it doesn't always work out. 
But despite the embassy's help, this desperate mother was unable to rescue her daughter. What happened? What did they say? Oh, young Sahuma, young Sahu, Yigiman Hago. Sagan Nil Motajugo, Hunters, Mana Boraco, Yigis. You're on your own. Yeah, yeah. Grace Road initially agreed to an interview, but they changed their minds and started ignoring our calls. When we try to film a Grace Road petrol station that's under construction, a worker demands to know what we're doing and calls head office. Sorry, sorry. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? From 101 East. For me, for me. We're just here taking some pictures. We are allowed to take pictures from public property. That's the law in Fiji. We've given you more than a month to respond to our interview request. When we go to the dairy farm where Simeone Nakualu's sister worked, members demand we leave. No, this is our private, private, why are you taking But we're, we're on public property. It doesn't matter, this is from, belongs to us. You should ask us first, why are you? We'd like to know why. We'd like to know where you're from. Can you write down? We're doing a story on Grace Road and its businesses in Fiji. And so this is a business, okay. so we're just taking a picture. No, you're wrong, because you taking from Grace Row, the, the, your uh, broadcaster, the yes. media, and then you should ask for us. Every day. Uh, Yunze is also being blocked by Grace Road. The church tells him, through the embassy, that he'll never be allowed on their property. So we agree to record a message for him. Okay. Oh. 아들에게 음, 대사관을 통해서 만나기를 요청했으나 음, 결국 만나지 않겠다는 안내가 하니 어쩔 수 없이 메시지로 대신한다. 저들은 부모와 자식조차 대면하지 못하게 하는 천륜을 저버린 집단이다. 나는 저런 집단과 끝까지 싸울 것이다. 너를 교회로 잘못 인도해서 힘든 생활을 하게 해서 정말 미안하다. 너가 나를 원망하더라도 아버지로서 할 말이 없고 너무 너무 미안하다. 그러나 너를 만나기를 간절하게 원하고 있고 온 가족들이 걱정하고 기다리고 있다는 것을. 잊지 말고 꼭 돌아와 주기를 간절히 바란다. We visit Grace Road to deliver his message. Good morning, Bula. sir. Good morning. It's Bula. We thought we'd try again to uh, see if Mr. Kim was here. No, he's still out. And we just tried to wanted to deliver a message to um, Lee Chong Wan. I wonder if he is here. No, he's. He's not here. Do you know when he might be back? Should we, we try again? We just wanted to play a, a video for him. Yes, um, my dear. When when they went out, they, they didn't tell us uh, where they going to. Yeah. Okay. So there's no way that we can get. Can we show this video to, to his son, to Lee Chan Wan? We're just asking but on behalf they, of the father. Okay. Yeah, no. Sorry for that. With no other way to contact Yun Zhe's son, we're forced to leave. Yun Zhe is devastated. Before he heads to the airport, he makes one last trip to the farm desperate to catch a glimpse of his son. Um and 
and he vows he'll keep fighting to protect others from what his family's been through.